straight up the other day, mm -hmm. somebody was asking like who some of my favorite like modern copywriters were. And I said, I am totally biased, but Kyle Milligan. <laughs> Ever since I started at Agora, you know, I've had an entrepreneurial streak. And so I've written copy for tutoring businesses. I've written copy for candle makers. I've written copy for service businesses, for all sorts of different stuff. The strategies and principles remain the same, but the tactics have to change. You know, like the way that one does price anchoring, for example, from one business to another, it might not work. Or the way somebody has like, or sprinkles urgency in at the end in an offer, it might not work for like a house painter. There is definitely a tactical change that needs to be made. You have to be smooth. You can't be this in your face. This paint deal expires in 24 hours. Yeah. You will never get white paint at this price again. But you can say something like, hey man, just saw rain's coming this Friday. Boom, something subtle and smooth that triggers a reason. Like, oh, why now? It can be something subtle. And, and the thing is, it just has to be a reason, just like that because experiment with the Xerox machine. Yes, yeah. So that's from Robert Caldini's Influence, where he talks about how it doesn't really matter much what the reason is, so long as you provide a reason for any type of persuasion that you're doing. I noticed this question. I'm struggling getting my first couple of clients. Any advice? Credibility, man. Credibility. I remember when I first wrote Take Their Money, like one of the earliest questions I got about the book before people started reading it and talking about it. If I read your book this weekend, can I charge 5K for a retainer on Monday? I don't know you. I don't know if you even, I don't know what you could charge for. I don't know if you know how to write copy. Do you have any credibility in the copy space or is it legitimately the first time you picked up a book? Like, have you ever sold anything? Get on Upwork or Fiverr and like take jobs that you think might be beneath you, but that you can just knock out of the fucking park so that you can one, get your first dollar. People are so obsessed with getting 10K per month. They don't ever think about like, Dude, you haven't even earned $1 from this. Earned! Earned $1. You ain't owed shit because you read a book, bruh. That's like my <laughs> biggest fucking peeve with this space. Focus on earning your first dollar. Don't focus on like the dream that you have of earning a 10K per month thing. Take those smaller, like lesser paying jobs so that you can get testimonials. So mm -hmm. that you can like say like, you know, I have my spec pieces that I showed to get those jobs, but then I also did the work and now that gets added to your portfolio too. And you have the testimonial and you have proof that you are an earning copywriter. Think of things like a snowball. Snowball, start small. And then you pick up one thing, you pick up another thing. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. That's how my career was. That's how his career was. It works that way. The reason you're insecure and you fuck shit up with clients is because you don't have reps. You are so scared to put yourself out there and get rejected that you never get rejected. If your mindset's not right, a lot of other stuff doesn't even matter. Copywriting and the skill needed to persuade somebody to buy or to take an action is different from the softer skills necessary to manage relationships. Getting clients, managing clients, managing expectations, setting boundaries. These are all discrete skills. And if you're a freelancer starting from square zero, like say you're 14 and you're just like, hey, copywriting is a good way to make money. Why haven't I gotten my first client yet? It's because copywriting is actually broken down into myriad multiple sets of different skills that you need to learn in order to be successful. Networking, charisma, fucking confidence. If you're able to get a job at an agency or in-house for a few years before you march off as a freelancer, that's going to benefit you more because that will allow you to get paid to learn the copywriting. And while you're doing that, you can also cultivate the softer skills that you need to succeed as a freelancer. Yeah, there's copywriting, but then there's this whole like orbiting satellites of skills that you also need to master in order to become a good freelancer. To succeed in any enterprise, you have to do two of three things. Do great work, be extremely likable, hit deadlines. And if you don't know shit about copy, like seriously, you haven't done a handful of projects that leaves you two of the three and you gotta get good at them, which is be extremely likable and hit deadlines. All right, look, hold up, hold this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Population of copywriters at any given moment and the time that they're in the game. I see people come in and leave within one to two months, that 20% that leaves. And these are people that they're entitled. They didn't see that success in that first one or two months and they'll drop. Yeah. And then it'll start to sort of level out. It should actually go a little bit slope down, down, down and more and more and more. But like 
the point of this graph is you can understand like this is a visual representation of the literal entitlement that exists inside of our industry. It goes back to that whole thing of I read a book. Can I charge five thousand dollars? It's like, bro, this is a skill. It's a numbers game. You are going to fail far more often than you are going to succeed. If you go into this business with fucked up high expectations, you're going to learn very quickly the kind of future that you can expect. Ultimately, one of the soft skills that you need to cultivate as you're getting into copywriting is like how to learn from failures, how to grow from failures, how to like negotiate and deal with failures and how to parlay those failures into successes. The reason I'm in copy is because I wanted to write novels. My whole life plan when I was in like my 20s was to write a couple novels and have them sell about $300 worth of royalties per month and move to Costa Rica. That was my whole like life plan in my 20s. So I wrote a couple novels. I wrote the books, but I couldn't sell them. I wrote the books, I published them, I had them on Kindle and Amazon and all those things, and I couldn't sell them. When you see someone who's like doing a thing or talking or has like a sort of amount of confidence, like you forget that they also struggle with like this idea of like, oh fuck, what if, or I don't know. I move home to my small community where everybody knows everybody and they're like, this kid is fucking stupid. He just threw away his life and then the books came out. <laughs> and then the books came out, which were quite, again, like personal and revealing and sometimes Lurid. explicit. This is a failure. Like I have no direction. I've written two novels. They're not selling. I'm running out of money and I'm refusing to get another job. Like, that's just the kind of guy that I was. Like, I'm not I'm going to figure out this writing thing. I'm going to be a writer. I failed my writing career into becoming a successful copywriter. I can't sell my novels. And the internet tells me you need to learn how to market your novels. And I said, well, how do I market my novels? And the internet tells me you need to learn copywriting. I Google copywriting on the Googles. And Kevin Rogers and Joe, Joe Schrieffer, two dudes I would end up hanging out with and having careers. And Kevin and I are friends. And Joe and I are friends now. And Joe says on the podcast, if, if you want to learn copy, I'll fly you out to Baltimore. I'll teach you how to write copy for like eight weeks or something like that. We'll put you up. They'll give you a house. I was like, motherfucker, I need one of those. I send Joe an email and I say, hey, man, I don't, I've never written copy. I've written some novels. Kyle made a mistake that I see a lot of people making with cold email. It was all about him. What he did next made it more interesting and compelling to Joe. So anyway, I told him all the stuff that he asked for me to tell him. I said, I just basically took the information he gave him the podcast. I said, I got all that stuff, A, B, and C, and I hit send. Next day, no response. So I sent a reply that just said, bump, colon, parenthesis, which is a smiley face. That was my way of saying to him, hey, motherfucker, look at me. It's okay to be a little stupid and arrogant. Like to be a little bit naive and say, you know, I deserve this. I should have this. I should have this success. I should be able to succeed in this arena. Joe finally, Joe, Joe sees the bump email and responds and he says, hey, Kyle, great to hear from you. Thanks for sending all that information, whatever. And he said, would you, we have two offices. Would you be interested in working in Baltimore, Maryland or Delray Beach, Florida? And I Googled Baltimore, Maryland. And then I Googled Delray Beach, Florida. And I promptly replied Delray Beach, Florida. Yeah. And he said, okay. He said, well, our uh, our office manager or copy chief out there is Evaldo Albuquerque. I'll put you in touch with him. So I believe I was Evaldo's first ever like official junior as he started like as copy chief in career. Now I know he worked with a couple people out there at the Delray Beach office, but I feel like they were all peers. Yeah, They were peers almost like at the same level. I was his first like junior in a title capacity. What, what did he say to you when you submitted your first piece of copy? So my first piece of copy, which was for James Altucher, Evaldo took the copy and read it. Evaldo then scheduled a meeting for us in Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> 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 he he could have called me. He could have just, just drove over and said, what's up? Here's another example of turning failure into success. You have to realize up to this moment, I'm still a failure. God damn it. Like I haven't had any success. <laughs> I've been going for a long time, not having any glimmer of hope. So I've written this whole ass promo and I submitted it to Evaldo. It was Doug Hill's office, the glass walls. Yeah. So I can see Evaldo as I'm walking up to it and he's sitting in the chair and he's got my promo printed out like on his lap, like in his hand. 
Yeah, and he's like <clears throat> looking at it, but he's like not reading it. You know that look. So I open the door. <laughs> and I have oh, fucking brand new. I've never written copy. I've I've just failed at everything in my life to date. And so I walk in, there's my new boss sitting there with my promo. And I can see as soon as I walk in, there's a lot of red ink. The whole thing is red. The whole thing has been marked out. And so I walk in and I was like, you know, essentially, you want to see me, boss? And I was like, hey, what's up? And so he's like, uh, what would you rate this promo from a scale of one to ten? And I was like, that's a terrible Valdo accent. They wouldn't know that if you would just shut up and let me tell my story. So <laughs> I was like, I was honest. I was like, well, the average copywriter by definition is a five. I said, I've never written copy. So I'm assuming it's somewhere between two and three because this is the worst piece of copy I have ever read in my entire life. And I was like, oof. <laughs> Right there. Right. As soon as he said it, I was like, Ugh. you know what? I'll tell you what I said next. I said to, to him, I said, all right, I'll work on it. I'll fix it. But you have, you can't, don't, don't say that to anybody else because I want to get more projects and I don't want anyone to know I'm this bad. I think I rewrote that promo. I want to say like six or eight times I had to rewrite an entire promo. And so we wrote the hottest IPO in history and I had hottest ipo go out and then me and braddock wrote trump bonus checks and that absolutely crushed you know your diet and like getting enough sleep you don't get any of that you throw all that shit out the window and you just fucking write the reason i'm able to do what i do is because all i fucking do i neglect my health i neglect my relationships i neglect sleep and I just write. That's why I'm able to do what I do because I was so fucking bad. God damn it. You got to understand. I didn't, I'm not, I didn't sit down and I'm just so good. I wrote a promo and it worked. This was hell for like months. So you're talking about turning failure into success. I had no fucking success. I am just a stubborn, stubborn fucking dude. And one of the co mistakes that I see copywriters make when they're just getting started is a lack of persistence the notion in their head that they need to make a lot of money right away. All the people that I know that earn those 10K, 20K, 40K per month incomes, they're the people who focus on their skills first and their paycheck later. And if you are the type of person who's obsessing over how much you can possibly get paid, you're not going to make it.